close almost half of America's working women say they have been harassed at their jobs. A new poll has found time. Who's next? Isn't the only question around the table this Thanksgiving after the fall of the unappetizing Harvey Weinstein. There's one even more vexing why now. Why did the Weinstein case start a landslide of UAL harassment accusations and admissions, when those of other famous men Clarence Thomas, Bill Clinton, Bill Cosby, Roger Ailes, Bill O'Reilly, Donald Trump did not? The answer to why some men behave this way is because they can and, in every civilization that hasn't stopped it, have. A recent Wall Street Journal poll found that almost half of women had experienced unwelcome UAL advances or verbal or physical harassment at work. But last year, a federal report concluded that 75% of employees with such complaints didn't voice them, especially if was involved. Instead, they avoided the harasser, denied or downplayed the gravity of the harassment, or tried to ignore, forget or endure it. They were afraid. Charlie Rose interviewed Bill Clinton in 2014 in New York. Both men have been under scrutiny for alleged UAL harassment in the wake of the Harvey Weinstein case, photo Michael Lochizano, Getty Images but why that fear has eased, and the problem been called out so suddenly, frequently and publicly, is a tougher question. I can't explain how these things get started, says Brian Bellog, a historian at the University of Virginia's Miller Center on Public Affairs. But this is a real moment, it might help to think of it as a butterfly moment. Catherine A. McKinnon, who four decades ago first advanced the argument that workplace UAL harassment violated federal law, published a book last year entitled Butterfly Politics. The title alludes to the idea that a small change can make a big difference. The flapping of butterfly wings in West Africa can begin a chain reaction that eventually causes a hurricane in South Florida. The Weinstein moment has many butterflies, none by themselves sufficient to explain why a traditional standoff, she cited us said, has given way in some cases to with exceptions such as Roy Moore in Alabama, she cited apologizes, many factors have combined, connected and collided to turn Tropical Depression Harvey into a hurricane. The following ones explain why conduct that once would have had the societal impact of a construction worker's wolf whistle has brought down cultural leaders like actor Kevin Spacey and TV host Charlie Rose, and embarrassed George H.W. Bush, whose family admits he sometimes patted women's bottoms, and the memory of the late Nobel Peace Laureate Elie Wiesel, accused of sliding his hand down to a woman's butt during a photo op. A string of antecedents The high-profile UAL harassment cases immediately before Weinstein's had the elements of his, but not the impact. Yet, taken together, the cases of Cosby, Ailes and O'Reilly built momentum for what was to come by showing women who'd been harassed on the job that, one, they weren't alone and two, if they did speak up, it wasn't the end of the world. What we're seeing now had been building for a long time, says McKinnon, who now teaches law at Michigan and Harvard. Every woman who brought out what was done to her has prepared the way. Marebs fires Charlie Rose after UAL misconduct claims surface not just Hollywood men facing UAL misconduct claims since Harvey Weinstein sexual harassment troubles mount in state houses around the country a backlash. Donald Trump won the presidency despite accusations by a dozen women of UAL harassment and despite admitting to such conduct on videotape. During the campaign, he was asked what he thought his daughter should do if she were really harassed at work. He said he hoped she'd seek another career or another company, but the Electoral College doesn't always reflect the zeitgeist. Millions of women were mad about the candidate's alleged conduct when he won, they got even madder. Still, victims of UAL harassment might well have taken the election result as a national rejection of their cause, a repeat of 1991, that's the year when Anita Hill accused Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas of having Uli harassed her when she worked for him at the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. That standoff resulted in his Senate confirmation and the infamous description of her as a little bit nutty, a little bit slutty. Instead, McKinnon says the election had something to do with many women coming to the end of our tether about how much UAL abuse of women is trivialized. Noreen Farrell, director of Equal Rights Advocates, a women's rights group founded in 1974, calls it the straw that broke the camel's back, a trigger what's the difference between O'Reilly and Weinstein? Both were rich, famous, powerful entertainment industry figures accused of UAL harassment. But the impact of their respective falls from grace were quite different. Michael Kimmel, founding director of the Center for the Study of Men and Masculinities at Stony Brook University on Long Island, says it's simple. Bill O'Reilly didn't harass Gwyneth Paltrow. O'Reilly says he didn't harass anybody. In our celebrity crazy culture, some of Weinstein's accusers, including Paltrow, Angelina Jolie and Ashley Judd were more celebrated than he was. And that helped make them more credible, because we seem to empathize the most with the people who need it the least. 
Most of their predecessors, however, were isolated or unknown, like Susan Fowler, an Uber software engineer. Eight months before the Weinstein case, Fowler wrote a blog post describing rampant UAL harassment at the ride-sharing company. It went viral. It led to the removal of CEO Travis Kalanick a wider look at the issue in Silicon Valley. But it pretty much stopped there. The new generation millennial women roughly those born since 1980 grew up after the women's liberation movement, and many see UAL harassment very differently than their mothers. For one thing, they don't regard a lecherous boss or colleague as someone to be tolerated. For another, they talk about it. This is a generation whose members reveal themselves and talk about themselves, says Farrell. What was taboo is now embraced, she says her daughter recently asked her what a UAL predator is. The girl is eight. A megaphone social media doesn't cause revolutions, but it seems to enable them. For many years, especially since Thomas was confirmed despite Hill's testimony against him in nationally televised hearings, women talked about workplace UAL harassment. But they generally did so in private, among themselves. Kimmel thinks that changed in part because women finally got, with Facebook, Twitter and other platforms, a way to talk to each other in public and en masse. Social media was electrified by the first posts about the Weinstein case by people like actress Alyssa Milano, who encouraged women to tweet about their own experiences. Around the world, millions have. The Meto hashtag allowed everyone to see how many people were affected, and victims to see they weren't alone. It allowed women to validate each other's stories, says Farrell, and thereby encouraged even more women to speak out, a tipping point everyone knows their safety in numbers. The question, always, is how many. What's the tipping point at which fear fades? For many victims of UAL harassment, Weinstein was the tipping point. That included his own professed victims, more than 80 at last count, and millions who've said they were similarly victimized by others. As Meryl Streep put it, this is a door that will not be closed. The tipping point has occasioned an avalanche of complaints that seems to be gaining momentum, feeding on itself because of what? Farrell calls the pace of the reveal. This week the Washington Post quoted Rhea Bravo, who worked on Rosa's PBS show beginning in 2007, of accusing the TV host of repeated, unwanted UAL advances. In explaining why she decided to publicly accuse her former boss, she said it took what she called this fierce moment of cultural reckoning for her to understand that he was a UAL predator, and I was his victim. Freedom from what? Our most famous image of the Thanksgiving's table was painted by Norman Rockwell in one of his Four Freedoms illustrations during World War II. Rockwell depicted a scene in which a huge turkey is set on a dining room table lined with family members. He called his painting Freedom from Want. But this year, as the table talk turns to Weinstein and so many others, characters Rockwell seems not to have imagined, the scene may better be described by the title of another picture in the wartime series Freedom from Fear. Read or share this story http suset.lee2idnitv.